Thanks, John, and uh, thanks for inviting me today. Um, this this is a pretty uncomplicated story, um, and to some extent, to some extent, it's about uncomplicated people. It's about the residents of a rural municipality, Golden Plain Shire. The same uncomplicated people. They're very smart. They're very passionate. They're, they're quite powerful, and sometimes they're prickly agitators, but always they've got their eye on a better future. These people probably don't use, although they implicitly understand, terms like capacity building, place-based funding, joined up government. It's not the language that they speak. But they've lived it for well over a decade in Golden Plains, and in partnership with Golden Plains Shire, they consistently do more with less. These citizens have great influence, and they are our partners in responding to community need. And if Golden Plains Shire doesn't think we can help to get it done, they usually get it done anyway. So today I'll cover a few areas. Firstly, I'll tell you the story about Golden Plains Community Planning Program. Then I'll draw the link between community planning and the better future that we've been talking about today and tomorrow. And I'll explain the benefits both for the community and to council. For those who don't know much about Golden Plains Shire, you should get out there sometime. It's the home of the Meredith and Golden Plains Music Festival. Moorable Valley wines such as Clyde Park, the Golden Plains Arts Trail, Meredith Dairy, you've probably had their goat's cheese, a Ballarat and Skipton Rail Trail, and more gold mining history than Solomon Hill on steroids. But it is historically rural and it's nestled between Geelong and Ballarat, and it's an interface towns between those two regional centres. There's comparatively cheap housing and, and a rural lifestyle. But it is experiencing rapid population growth in percentage terms, and there are limited local services and employment. So the creation of Golden Plains some 20 years ago this month, in fact, established a municipality with a large number of small communities. The central question the council grappled with 20 years ago was, how do we develop and support these 35 plus communities across the Shire equally? And so community planning was born. In 2000, five community plans were, were established and six more were then developed to make 11 by 2003, then, then 18 by 2005 and today there are 22, covering 30 plus communities. The financial investment in projects that have come out of community plans totals over $6 million. And the fact that these projects have sound evidence of community support is a major contributing factor of securing the funding. So, how do we do it and what has been achieved? Rather than me tell you about it, how about you hear from the stars of the show, our residents of Golden Plains. I've got a clip here that was put together to really inspire the participants in the program and show them the great things that have been achieved and also explain how community planning is done. So I'll, I'll elaborate on some of the examples a bit later, so I hope you enjoy the clip if I can get it to go. You are about to show the future of your community by being part of the Golden Plains Shire Community Planning Program. Community planning has achieved great things in our Shire, including new and upgraded facilities, vibrant events and improved services across Golden Plains. Today, we will introduce you to the program and explain how easy it is to make a difference in your community. People just like you, have great stories to tell about how they have changed their community for the better. Like Craig in Cape Clear. Well, we've got a cape, so why wouldn't we have a lighthouse? A, a group of people got together and thought it was a good idea, but the act of the first uh, attraction for the town also put us on the map. Word of mouth basically, we have a notice board in that town in front of the, the post office. We also use the fire brigade because we have a network of communication there, both by um, email and word of mouth. The hotel is also a very good place where we can get people meeting and say, have you heard about a particular project we're trying to do and get a bit of talking going on? And when we need to, we can do a mail out. The TSAL Community Planning Group had an idea which they were able to progress with cool design Fantastic fun to write. So, so initially I was approached by the community coordinator that had an idea to build a bandstand. But their, their, their idea was pretty, it's kind of a lot more traditional. 
forum. Um, uh, but in discussion with all that, the idea was uh, it evolved quickly into something a bit more specific to TSA or unique to TSA. And uh, in conversation, we, we talked about what, what that could possibly be, what form I could take. We talked about the site itself and the fact that eventually we talked about the fact that the bend of the creek is a home to eastern long neck turtles. And as soon as we started talking about turtles in the, in the creek, suddenly all this kind of fell into place. Um, we had a series of drawings like this. And we actually had a couple of public exhibitions that we organised. The Greenville and Garibaldi Community Planning Group keep it fun and as easy as possible. The more fun it is, the more people are involved. But our community of Greenville and Garibaldi is um, a very unique community, I think, in that we focus upon um, a lot of get togethers at our home, lot of social occasions where all of our meetings are held and we've got there some fun. Yeah, and we still do have meetings and we still do take minutes and do all that kind of stuff. But we also try and link it in with an event so that we might have our um, regular organised meetings and call meetings an hour before one of our um, get-togethers. Um, and we have monthly Friday evening get-together, so we often know that uh, everyone's going to be coming back. We have a call in the newsletter put together by volunteers and um, people contribute all sorts of Arthur's at the gardens and museums around town and we distribute it to all the residents. So, how do these great ideas turn into real outcomes? Community. Too many trade secrets to let you know. <laughs> no, I'm, um, in, in the interest of getting through time, I won't uh, bore you with the process stuff, I just thought I'd tell you a few of the stories. So why do community planning? But back in 1999 and 2000, I wasn't around at the time, by the way, but um, there was no real push to do community planning. It was quite a new concept. Um, and there were no such, there was no legislation that said we had to do it. There was no push or there were no words like community capacity building and resilient communities or a better future back then. The reason Golden Plains did community planning because it made sense to us. And, um, and all the while, I suppose, we were entering into, into territory that you could describe as being more citizen-centric and, and giving residents the opportunity to influence just council's decision-making, which is some a part of the new future that we're talking about here in the next couple of days. But where is the link? So I read an article recently about reform of public services, which quoted the MAV's fearless leader and a councillor who is in my top 11 councillors of all time, Councillor Bill MacArthur, the article contended that the better future for public sector service delivery is about joined up, open government being more able to respond to local needs. Piece of cake. And this includes giving citizens more access and influence, putting community needs first, and local government brokering rather than doing it. While all these principles exist in community planning, what if councils did more than just respond to local needs? What if they allowed communities to respond to them themselves? and achieve their own aspirations. Let's look at the examples from our clip. So remember Cape Clear. Legend has it that Cape Clear is named after Cape Clear off the south coast of Ireland. I'm sure you can see the similarity. This is the lighthouse on Fastnet Rock off Cape Clear in Ireland. It is a little bit different to our lighthouse. Yes, I will grant you that. But, uh, so Cape Clear is 200 kilometres from any ocean. As you heard, Craig, locals believe that every cape needs a lighthouse, so they built one. They did it with their own resources, by raising the funds themselves and actually achieving a lot of the work themselves. Not long after that, you probably saw in the clip, they designed their playground in the shape of a ship. The irony with all of this is that Cape Clear doesn't have any mains water supply. So it's all the nautical themes, but no water. The residents continue to think about how they can improve their community and they thought of a community event. What would they run? You guessed it, a yacht race. <laughs> An inland yacht race where people made their yacht and ran with it on the Cape Clear Recreation Reserve. Hundreds of people turned out and had a great time and raised some important funds for the community. Of course, there is a yacht race in Ireland that goes around Fastnet, Fastnet Rock. It's one of the richest yacht races on the planet. It's sponsored by Rolex and it has hundreds of thousands of euro in prize money. When planning their event, the Cape Clear residents thought about this and they named their event the Slow Net Yacht Race. It's sponsored by the Cape Clear Hotel 
and the first prize is 100 bucks and a meal voucher at the pub. <laughs> so you can see residents are having fun with this and they're achieving great things for their community and all the while their capacity grows. An example of this is this, um, as I mentioned, Cape Clear has no re reliable water source. And so council partnered with them to try and find a funding body that might fund the board, which is really important for this community to maintain the rec reserve um, and help them in the event of bushfire. Drought relief funding had, pardon the pun, dried up and council officers couldn't find a funding body that would fund a board. So I think I was charged with the, the job of going back with that news which the residents weren't terribly happy with. Um, and so rather than get upset and bag council and have a go at me, which they probably did, they then wrote to their local member in an election year and, the, and that, that was a marginal seat. So council officers were contacted soon after with the encouragement to submit a, submit a project proposal for a board. Lo and behold, we were successful. So people power cannot be underestimated. I think that can be described as co-advocacy at its finest. Another quick example, and I'm getting through it, John. Um, here's an example of our health and community centre in, in a town called Smysdale. And residents have, have, have had the ability to influence council strategic decisions through this example. Health was mentioned in a lot of community plans. So there's no services in Golden Plains, as I mentioned, or very little services in Golden Plains. But health is an issue everywhere. So it led to a study with that Council picked up on the theme that health was a big concern in our community and it led to a study between Golden Plain Shire, Ballarat Community Health and an agency called Hess Rural Health. And one of the key priorities from that study was access to uh, a doctor's surgery in the north of the Shire. We attracted significant fund funding to make this dream a reality several years ago and that centre has evolved to now include a, not only a GP but now has a pharmacy, podiatrist, psychologist, maternal child health and district nurse and dietitian. <coughs> Another quick example is recently four communities identified streetscape improvements as a top priority and council were able to allocate our regional growth fund towards these four communities. We're always looking to consult with our communities and you know, officers can do a fairly good job but with the engaged residents that we have in community planning, their reach is much wider in their community. So they're able to mobilise a great number of people to have their say on these projects. So the energy can be transformed into more than just meetings, but it goes from, from pictures like this to actual concepts and deliverables like this. So what are the benefits? First, let's look at the community. This slide's telling us that Communities don't always need things done to them or for them, but they always like to remain informed. There's countless examples, not only in Golden Plains but everywhere, about residents that are capable and um, able to do things that they see as a need in their community. Sometimes the best thing we can do is get out of their way and just support them. Some other benefits are that um, these, the highly connected residents understand the different priorities of council, so they're getting their head around some of the issues that we as an organisation are grappling with. And they understand the balancing act that council, council needs to do. <coughs> and with this knowledge they can moderate community debate or they can be involved in community debate with accurate information. And this peer debate is extremely powerful and enables residents to understand each other's views. We can harness the tension between the traditionalist roads, rates and rubbish people with those who understand the need for services and infrastructure that keeps pace with contemporary community expectation. And these highly engaged residents understand why council makes particular, particular decisions and can explain this effectively to fellow residents. I could take up another 20 minutes talking about benefits to council, but just briefly. Effective community planning presents the opportunity for an ongoing, meaningful conversation with residents which goes beyond project-by-project project consultation or development of a strategy. It's an ongoing relationship that deepens the understanding for both council and the community. And as I wrap up, if I just take a second point there, I can't think of a grant that I've read in the last five years that doesn't have the question or criteria, show community support for this project. 
having a process or a program where you're already ready and you're capturing the priorities of your communities um, makes it easy for councils to decide which projects to partner with and it significantly increases your chances of attracting the funding. So that's the uncomplicated story of community planning in Golden Plain Shire. I'll leave you with this thought. The better future already exists in your organisations and in your communities. We don't need to say much created, but really find it by peeling back our systems, talking to our communities, and uncomplicating the way we do business. The challenge is there. I wish you all the best with it. Thank you. Uh, we're a bit squeezed for time, sorry.